located in the North Atlantic Ocean, you'll find a small cluster of islands known as the Faroe Islands. This remote country consists of rocky islands formed by countless volcanic eruptions while being surrounded by a seemingly endless and unforgiving sea. But it's due to the unrelenting side of nature, which has not only shaped the very lives of the Faroese people, but also the very land on which they stand. The country boasts some of the most dramatic and impressive natural landscapes you'll ever witness, and is most likely the main reason for why people are seamlessly attracted to this small nation in the middle of the sea. So if you're planning to visit the Faroe Islands, then I hope this video will help you on your way to explore a fascinating country and arguably one of the best kept secrets in all of Europe. Before we begin, there are a few basic things you'll want to know before arriving in the Faroe Islands. The Faroe Islands are a self-governing country within the Kingdom of Denmark, which also includes Greenland. Although the country is part of Europe, it is not a member of the European Union. As such, if you plan to visit the country, make sure your passports or visa details are in order, as rules may differ depending on where you're traveling from. As for language, Faroese is the main spoken language. However, due to its ties to Denmark, most Faroese people are able to speak Danish as well as English proficiently. As for currency, you can both use the Danish krona as well as the Faroe Islands' very own Faroese krona, but you can also get by with a credit card here. The best season to visit the Faroe Islands is during the summer, as most activities are available during these months. But summer is also the most crowded, so you might want to consider the shoulder seasons if you want to avoid the crowds. The weather is unpredictable. At one moment it can be sunny, and in the next you can be experiencing snow. In general, it's quite windy and cloudy throughout the year, so dress accordingly. Bringing something waterproof and windproof is usually a good idea. The best way to explore the islands is by car. Although the country boasts a well-developed network of buses and ferries, I really do just recommend that you get your own car. Don't bother with four-wheel drives as the majority of roads are well paved, so you really don't need them. In terms of driving in the Faroe Islands, you will notice a lot of sheep. It is said there are more sheep than there are people in the Faroe Islands, so do pay attention to them and slow down when you see them. Another thing to pay attention to are tunnels. The two main ones are the two subsea tunnels which connects the four main islands. Here you'll have to pay a toll fee of around 100 kroner when going through them. You can pay the fee at FO gas stations, but do contact your car rental company beforehand as they may automatically deduct the fee. More fee tunnels are scheduled to come, so make sure to keep up to date on the official website. Lastly, many activities such as certain hikes now cost a fee. Some of the fees can be quite steep, going upwards of 500 kroners. The fees are said to be used to maintain the trails and area of the sites. Now, my opinion is that while some of the fees are quite expensive, I say it's better to be able to pay a fee and experience the place than not to be able to experience it at all. Also, all of the known and popular locations are situated on private land, so the landowner could easily have just refused access to these amazing locations, which would be a shame. So having the option of paying a fee versus not experiencing the places at all, I know what I would choose. In the end, it's up to you whether you feel it's worth paying these fees or not. When you arrive in the Faroe Islands, your journey will most likely start in Vargar at the Vargar Airport. This is where we picked up our rental car and started our trip. There are a few places you want to experience on the island of Vargar before heading east. Casa de Lourdes, a cliffside village and its accompanying waterfall Mulefursur is a must visit during your time on the island. The village is located on the northwestern end and enjoys a panoramic ocean view of neighboring island Mucinus. In the past, the only way to reach the village was for a difficult hike over the mountains. But in 2004, a tunnel was built allowing for easier access to the village. It's easily one of the most scenic and beautiful places in all of Faroe Islands and shouldn't be missed. To the south of Gasa de Lourdes, you'll find Dragonir, which takes a good 5-6 to six hours hike to reach. In the past, many would do this hike themselves, but it's now only possible to do legally with a guide. The fee is about 550 kroners per person, and the hike is only available from April to October. 
For more details on this hike or any hikes in the Faroes, visit hiking.fo. Right next to the airport, you'll find Sørvaksvatn, also known as Littisvatn, which is the largest lake in the Faroe Islands. It has a relatively short and easy hike, which leads to an almost surreal but breathtaking view. If you choose to do the hike, please be aware you'll have to pay a fee at the start of the route of around 200 kronos per person. To the west of Vargar, you'll find the island of Mykines. Here, you'll be able to do a scenic hike to Holmer Lighthouse, as well as visit the puffins along the route. You can get to Mykines by ferry from Vargar, which will cost you about 160 kronos per person, including a return trip. You can only visit Mykines during the summer months. As there are limited ferry tickets, please be sure to book early. For more info or to book your ferry tickets, visit mykines.fo. As we move away from the western side of the country, we head east. Through the subsea tunnel that connects the island of Vargar to Stremoy, and then southeast, where we can find Torshavn, the capital and the largest city of the Faroe Islands. Spend some time exploring Torshavn, especially near the old town district with its colorful and historic buildings. While here, you might as well sample some of the local food. The Faroe Islands have an underrated dining scene, and I'm a big believer of food being the best way to explore a country's culture. If you're looking for some recommendations, then considering the following restaurants. Fudastova for an international take on traditional fairies cuisine. Rest, a restaurant focused on traditional fairies fermented foods. Barbara Fish House, as the name implies, offers freshly caught seafood. And finally, Orstova, which offers both traditional dishes of lamb and seafood. After tour sound, we head towards the northern part of Stremor, where our first place is the iconic Fossa. Fossa is a 140 meters waterfall, making it the tallest waterfall in all of Faroe Islands. To the west of Fossa, we'll find the small village of Saxon. Saxon is a picturesque small village surrounded by mountains. Known for a Saxon church as well as a sandy lagoon where you'll be able to walk along during low tide, Saxon is a beautiful and serene place that is worth visiting at least once during your trip. Further up north, you'll find Chernovik. Chernovik is the northernmost village of Stremoy. The village is known for its black sandy beach as well as its sea stacks. During the summer, you'll also be able to embark on a hike through the northwestern side of the area and reach a sea stack by cable. To the east on the neighboring island of Isteroy, you'll find Gjöf. Gjöf is a beautiful village named after the 200 meter sea filled gorge that goes from the village into the ocean. South of Europe, you'll find one of my favorite places on the island. Grithammer is a short and easy hike where you'll be rewarded with an amazing view of the nearby fjord and the small village below known as Funiger. It's an impressive location and definitely one of the highlights during my trip. As we head southeast along the island through the second subsea tunnel, we'll find the island of Bordeaux and the town of Klasvik. It's from the harbor of Klasvik that we're able to board a ferry to visit the island of Kalsoy and meet the infamous Seal Woman. As we head north, we'll find the iconic hike to Kaller Lighthouse. 
This hike takes about two hours to complete and it comes with an impressive view of the landscape surrounding the lighthouse. This is definitely a must do for anyone planning to visit the Faroe Islands. We visited during the month of May and as you can see in the video, the trail is a bit muddy, is a bit slippery, so do come with some reliable hiking boots if you plan to visit during the off season. Actually, in any season, do come with some reliable hiking boots, guys. I also wanted to give a special mention to the island of Kunoi for the small little peaceful park on top of the Kunoi village. It's a lovely little location and it's a great place to rest and sort of just enjoy being amongst the pine trees. So yeah, that's it for this short guide on the Faroe Islands. I do apologize for any butchering of the names and locations in this video. This is by all means not a super comprehensive guide on everything there is to do in the Faroe Islands. There are many more activities that I haven't mentioned and this is only meant to be a short crash course guide to this amazing country based on my very own recent trip. So please do further research if there are particular parts of the Faroe Islands that you wish to experience. But I hope at least this video served as an inspiration and perhaps provided some good suggestions on things to see and do while you're there. If you have any feedback or any questions, leave it in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. But regardless, I hope you have a great trip to the Faroe Islands. It's an amazing place. I loved it when I was there. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you in another video.